major types of muscle fibers. There is type 1 and there is type 2. Now, type 1 is a very thin fiber. It is a slow, it is a small diameter. It's a very weak fiber. And someone who is thin and weak, you feel sorry for them. Yes. So just to remember, this is a very sorry looking fiber. Yes. And what does it stand for? S is slow, small, O is oxidative and R stands for red. So this is a slow, small, oxidative and red. I do not have anything with the remaining R and Y. So this is slow, small, oxidative and red. If this is a slow fiber, the type 2 is a fast fiber. If type 1 is a small diameter fiber, this is a large diameter fiber. If type 1 has got oxidative metabolism, type 2 has anaerobic or glycolytic metabolism. If type 1 is red, then type 2 is a white fiber. So once you know these basic differences between type 1 and type 2, it will be possible for us to enumerate more differences. So type 2 has a faster myosin ATPase activity. All activities will be faster in the type 2 fiber. Type 2 fiber is a fast fiber. Type 1 is a slow fiber. Type 1 will have a longer twitch duration. All phases will be prolonged in the type 1 fiber, whereas type 2 has a shorter twitch duration. Type 1 fiber has more mitochondria. Oxidative metabolism means more mitochondria. Type 1 fiber has a higher capillary density. It needs a better blood supply. It has more myoglobin. Myoglobin is a pigment which is present in the type 1 fibers, it is a storehouse of oxygen. This gives it a red color to the type 1 fiber. Type 2, on the other hand, has less mitochondria, lower capillary density, less myoglobin, because the metabolism in the type 2 fiber is glycolytic. But at the same time, which fiber will have an early fatigue ability? Type 2. Glycolytic metabolism means accumulation of lactic acid. So early fatigability will be in type 2. Delayed fatigability in type 1. That means the type 1 muscle fibers are used for slow sustained contractions. And the type 2 muscle fibers will be used for brief and Powerful contractions. See, in a muscle, we have both type 1, type 1 and type 2 fibers. But depending upon the activity of the muscle, type 1 or type 2 may predominate. Like for instance, all the posture maintaining muscles, they are contracting throughout the day. So which fibers will predominate in the anti-gravity muscles or the posture maintaining muscles? Type 1. Type 1 is meant for slow sustained contractions. Type 2, brief and powerful contractions. Now, there is something known as the size principle. And what is the size principle? This states that during a graded activity, the type 1 fiber will be recruited first, followed by type 2. When a muscle begins any sort of a graded activity, it will use the slow, smaller, weaker fibers first. If it is able to overcome the load with the help of type 1 fibers, fine. But if it needs extra power, extra strength, it will use the type 2 fibers. So, which fibers are a reserve in a muscle contraction? Will be type 2. During graded activity, type 1 fibers will be used. If required, then the type 2 
will also be recruited. This is what is known as the size principle. Next, let's try and understand what is a motor unit. Again, a question which is often asked. A motor unit is a single A alpha motor neuron along with all the muscle fibers it supplies. A single A alpha motor neuron along with all the muscle fibers it supplies. The muscle fibers are all arranged in parallel. So this is what is known as a motor unit. Now we have to remember that the types of muscle fibers in one motor unit will be the same. Only one type, one type of muscle fibers will be present in a motor unit. The muscle can have both types of motor units, but in a motor unit, only one type of muscle fiber, either type 1 or type 2. You cannot have type 1 and type 2 muscle fibers in one motor unit. A motor unit will only have one type of muscle fiber. But the number of muscle fibers in each motor unit can be variable. Muscles which have finer control have smaller motor units. So that means extraocular muscles, extraocular muscles which control the movement of the eyeball. They have fewer muscle fibers in each motor unit. Five to six muscle or six to seven muscle fibers per motor unit. Definitely less than 10. But in muscles of the back, where I do not need a fine control, the number of muscle fibers in each motor unit is almost 600 muscle fibers per motor unit. Muscles with finer control have smaller motor units, Muscles which do not need a fine control have larger motor units. Now let's have a look at the nomenclature of these motor units. Now we've already discussed that the muscle fibers can be divided into type 1 and type 2. Type 2 muscle fiber is also known as the SO muscle fiber. What does the S stand for? Slow. What does O stand for? Oxidative. The motor unit which has the type 1 fiber. Remember I told you, in a motor unit, only one type of muscle fibers are present. So motor unit with type 1 muscle fiber is known as the S motor unit or the slow motor unit. Type 2 muscle fibers. Type 2 muscle fibers, we said, are fast, large, glycolytic metabolism, and they are white in color. But now a step further. The Type 2 muscle fiber can be divided into type 2A and type 2B. Type 2A is FOG. What does that mean? This is a fast fiber, but it has a moderate oxidative capacity and moderate glycolytic capacity. Whereas type 2B has only glycolytic metabolism. So the motor unit with the type 2A fiber will be known as the FR motor unit. And what is that? This is fast and resistant to fatigue. Why is it resistant to fatigue? Because of the moderate oxidative capacity. Whereas the motor unit with the type 2B fiber is known as FF motor unit and that is fast and fatigable. Now let's apply the size principle to the motor unit. During a graded activity, a muscle will use the S motor units first. Then it starts using the FR motor units. 
and then the FF. Let's try and understand this a little more. Now, during standing, the S motor units of the calf muscles are being used. S motor units of the calf muscles are recruited. Now, the moment I start walking, along with S, the FR motor units will be recruited. If I start running, I need more strength, more power. So now I start using, along with S, FR, also the FF motor units. This is what is graded activity, standing, walking, running. By the way, has been asked as a question. Uh, this was an INICET question. Which are the motor units which are recruited during walking? S plus FR. 